Okay, let's start it. Thank you so much, and welcome to our talks, especially the last session of the last day of the conference. We really appreciate. Okay, I am Catherine Dip. Uh, I'm a uh, ar solution architect and performance engineer at IBM. My name is Ted Chen, and I am a software engineer and performance engineer also at IBM. Yes, hi, and I am Paul Vanek, software and performance engineer as well, also at IBM. Okay, so to start with, let's go through the agenda that we'll go through today. So we'll first give a um, introduction and um, some detail uh, about per kit performance benchmark itself. Uh, we will then go on in to introduce a tool that we have uh, implemented named per kit Elastic Shirt Publisher. Um, this is the uh, tool that will be used to uh, send the result and analyze result, etc. Um, then we'll have a demo uh, of how you would use the publisher uh, and Kibana to analyze the data. A quick summary and then wrap up today's session. When we talk about performance analysis in OpenStack, what kind of tools come into your mind? Anyone? Exactly. So when we talk about performance, we would pretty much think about Rally. And Rally is such a good tool, a well-known tool, suit the purpose of what we do. But like anything else in performance testing, I personally believe that there's no one tool, one size fits all tools. And we, I believe we would use different tools for different purpose. To illustrate the idea, let's look at a number of sample tools. It, it doesn't mean to be a complete list, but let's look at a number of tools. Look at Rally. As we all know, this is an OpenStack project. The strength of Rally is in data uh, control plan uh, performance analysis. What you do there and especially at scale, you would use there to uh, measure your pro provisioning time, whatever configuration, how many network. But the net result is you want to know how fast can you put up a VM. You also want to know, you use Rally to know if I put one, the VM sequentially, one at a time, versus the performance if I do concurrent user, what would be the difference? Or if I just continually uh, uh, provision the number of VM and pack my compute node, what would be the characteristic of this provisioning time? Uh, does it increase as the number of density of VM in the uh, compute node increase? Is there a saturation point? So Rally is a tool is really good to looking at controller plane performance. Uh, neutron uh, uh, um, performance, ser neutron server performance, etc. But looking at the next tool I want to talk about is Perkit Benchmarkers. So this is an open source uh, performance measurement tool that o uh, originated by uh, Google. Um, like. In Perkit, the strength of it is it includes a number of popular benchmarks for data plan performance measurements. So what is data plan performance measurements? So in controller plan performance, let's take one example. You will be interesting to know um, if I put a VM, how long does it take to put that VM, et cetera. For data plan performance in this context, you would like to know now that the VM already uh, boot up, now that I install my application or my middleware, for example, like a database on there, what would be the performance of that database 
That is what we are talking about. We're talking about whatever things, whatever application workload that you put on top of that. The, the data plan analysis um, will typically use a, a benchmark and we have a number of popular benchmarks out there and a number of them are uh, included in per, uh, per kit benchmark. Then if you want to simultaneously look at the performance of the data plan and the control plan together, you would use something like a spec cloud IIS 2016. This is a spec uh, standard that come out from the spec corporation. As you know, if you would like to publish your benchmarking data, this is a, uh, a place that uh, with credibility that you will have your data put there. One of the tools that included in the Spec Cloud IIS 2016 is CB Tools. CB Tool is an open source that originated by IBM. It comes with, just like Perkit, 25 plus workloads in there. Um, the, the thing about Spec Cloud uh, 2016 is there's two parameters, two metrics that was defined by the spec especially, specifically for cloud. One is elasticity. So if, if you are in a cloud, your capacity should be uh, unlimited or somehow limited, but it's more than your traditional data, uh, data center. Um, the other, uh, so elasticity is if, if at any time my workload increase and I need more capacity, these things should be automatically spin up an VM, put your uh, workload in there and run. The second parameter is scalability. So if for this kind of tool you would like, you would use it if you would like to publish your data as a official benchmarker uh, uh, metric and at the same time want to look at both data and controller plans. And browbeat, there are sessions talking about browbeat at this summit. This is another OpenStack uh, uh, project. The strength of this one is you have an Ansible playbook that you can install, not eat, not uh, including the tools and also maybe some of your infrastructure like your Elasticsearch environment, your Kibana, etc. So if you would like a tool that do all of this to you with uh, uh, some standard dashboard that they included in there, this is the tool that you would be using. But in, in short, what we're saying is there's number of tools in there. It's the user that you will choose the correct tools for your purpose. In today's uh, talk, we talk about Perkit's benchmarker. It is one of the tools uh, that we would like to introduce to you. So, Paul. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. So, of course, as Catherine mentioned, PerfKit Benchmarker is an open source cloud performance measurement framework originated by Google. Roughly around early last year, it is hosted and managed on github.com. So anyone can submit a pull request if they want to make a change. The link is provided right here. So the strength of PerfKit is that it provides wrappers and workload definitions around several existing popular benchmarks. So for determining what benchmarks, yeah, so for determining what benchmarks are included, typically the community is engaged uh, to determine representative benchmarks that might uh, represent cloud performance. Areas that are considered are things like reproducibility, ease of use, and relevance to customers. So right now, well, last that I checked, PerfKit Benchmarker has around 28 benchmark tools configured. Run straight out of the box. So the benchmarks are run in their default states and configurations. That is not tuned at all to provide, uh, not, not tuned at all to in favor of any specific provider. Now there are 11, currently 11 cloud providers enabled. 
We'll get into what those are in a bit, but the goal is to have benchmark diversity with good coverage and minimal overfitting. So when you run pen or perfkit benchmarker, when it initiates a test, uh, VMs are provisioned in the cloud. Uh, Perfkit Benchmarker has, ins installs a selected benchmark in VMs, runs the benchmark, then reports, the, reports and collects the results. Now, you don't have to have Perfkit provision the VMs. You can also specify existing VMs or external points in the config file and optionally pass that in. But yeah, the idea is the same. You pass in your Perfkit, or yeah, your benchmark tool and your config file slash cloud provider and let perfkit do its work. So next slide. So here are the variety of benchmarks that perfkit currently has support for. In the top table, you have what are like system level benchmarks. In the lower table, you have what are application level workloads. So in the micro benchmarks table, you, you might see the three, key, the three key area of interest are storage, CPU, and network. So you might have run CoreMark, which is for CPU performance. Or you might run iPerf or NetPerf, for instance, if you were interested in network performance, like if you wanted to measure throughput. Uh, in workloads, you have big data slash IoT, high performance computing slash scientific computing, simulation and web benchmarks. You have all the YCSB under Big Data, which is Yahoo Cloud Serving Benchmark, good for data store workload testing. Also, for instance, you might have Tom, might want to run Tomcat for as a web benchmark. Now, these, this is a list of the support, supported pro, supported providers that Perfkit currently has. Of course, Google Cloud is up there. It's a Google Run project, and of course, OpenStack. Now, installation of PerfKit Benchmarker is it's very trivial. Git clone the repository, then it's, it's, a, it's a Python project, so you'd pip install the requirements file inside the repository. And then each provider has its own requirements file that you have to also install. So we care about OpenStack, so we just install the OpenStack requirements file. And once you have that, running PerfKit is actually very Simple as well. So for OpenStack, here's an example run. We're measuring the core mark score for an OpenStack, OpenStack VMs. So first, of course, source the RC file, get your OpenStack credentials in your environment, then run the pkb. the pkb.py script inside the root folder, then specify your cloud provider. Here we specify OpenStack, then the benchmark. Benchmark or benchmarks is here. We're just running core mark. Of course, here's the cloud specific options. And then you can optionally put metadata in the arbitrary key value pair to help, help you identify a test run and what was being tested at a later time. Here's a list of some OpenStack provider related flags. Of course, you might see many of these flags should be familiar to many of you as users of OpenStack. For example, OpenStack image username. Oh, that's just the SSH username for cloud, the cloud image you're booting into. Now, here are some sample results. So PerfKit, by default, returns results in JSON. Of course, you can optionally return them as CSV or whatever, but here we have, you might see that the metric field in the JSON result is highlighted as a core mark score. Then you have the test that was run. Here we ran core mark, the value in unit. There's no, since it's a score, there's no unit. And of course we have, we see the metadata that we had passed in, in the metadata uh, dictionary. So, Typically, you, you might just import these into, you might import these into a spreadsheet or whatever, but that's, we, we prefer a systematic way of being able to analyze and visualize our data. So that's where we, that's where we came up with, where, what Ted's gonna talk about. 
Here, I'll pass it off to Ted. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so for some people who would like to have a systematic way to analyze a test result, uh, Google have, uh, PerfKit have provided uh, and a, uh, a tool for you to uh, look at your own data. So the current approach for uh, the PerfKit uh, is to use the PerfKit Explorer. Now to use the PerfKit Explorer, uh, you will need to run the same command. Uh, you pick your own uh, uh, benchmarks, and then you choose your own uh, cloud provider. But additionally, in your perfkit command, you're going to specify this BigQuery table of yours. So at the end of the perfkit uh, test, all of your uh, data result will be automatically uploaded to your own Google BigQuery table. And then you can deploy your perfkit explorer to the Google App Engine. And then over there, you can analyze your test results. Now, of course, for some people uh, who own their own data center or would like to save their test result elsewhere, uh, we have implemented the PerfKit Elasticsearch Publisher. So the Publisher uh, allows users uh, to leverage popular open source tools such as Elasticsearch and Kibana. Uh, Elasticsearch, as you may know, is a search engine that stores and, and indexes JSON documents. And Kibana is an interface plugin that provides visualization capabilities on top of the data indexed by the Elasticsearch. So uh, we have implemented the code directly inside the PerfKey benchmarker. And we have also created and submitted a pull request to the PerfKit community. And currently, we're working with the community to have it merged. So how do we use the Elasticsearch Publisher and Kibana? So first, similarly, we're going to pick our own benchmarks. Second, we will pick our uh, cloud provider. And then additionally, what we're going to provide is our own Elasticsearch URI. So at the end of the result, all of your data and result will be automatically sent to your own Elasticsearch server. And then can be uh, visualized and analyzed uh, using the Kibana dashboard. Uh, Kibana dashboard, you can analyze your data by creating charts bar charts or line charts. So here is the full command to run your PerfKit with the Elasticsearch Publisher. So all you need to do is in the bottom, specify your own Elasticsearch Publisher, uh, Elasticsearch Server URI. Okay, uh, in the demo next, I'm going to show you um, uh, how to build a chart to compare a call mark score using Kibana. Now, before that, let's look at one more time the JSON result returned by the perf kit. Now, one of the important metrics of the perf, uh, of the core mark benchmark is the core mark score. So here you will also see the value of the core mark score. And the test is core mark. And here, inside the metadata, you will see machine type, which is your flavor, m1.large. So I have been running uh, a number of uh, PerfKit uh, tests to collect the core mark result uh, using different uh, flavors of VM. 
So what I'm going to do next is that I will co compare the core mark score uh, for the VNs of different flavors. So uh, next, I'm going to show you um, a video recording that I made earlier. Uh, because I'm not sure, quite sure the network speed. Uh, so we pre-recorded this recording earlier. Okay. So this is my own uh, Kibana dashboard. Oh, thank you. Okay. So uh, this is my own Kamala dashboard. So on the top, you'll see uh, three tabs that you'll be used very often. The Discover, Visualize, and Dashboard. So under the Discover tab is where you're going to uh, see your test result. Uh, or you can search for a particular test under the Visualize tab is where you're going to build your charts. Now here are all the charts you can build. Now under the dashboard is where you can put all of your charts and search results into one place. So first, let's start with the Discover. It is the first step to build a dashboard and chart. So let's search Core Mark. You will see uh, only the test result containing core mark will return, and they are highlighted. So for some people uh, who like to build more precise uh, search, they can also use the Lucene search syntax. So in this case, um, there are only three results returned. Let's click on one of the results. So as you can see, this is the exact uh, JSON file that I showed you earlier in the slide. It has uh, the value, and it has the test that says core mark, and it has the metrics that says core mark score. And under the metadata, it also has the VM flavor. So, uh, you know, this gives you a very detailed view of one of uh, your result samples. Uh, now, uh, on the left, you will see a list of fields. Now, these fields are only related to the document on the right. So now we can customize the look of your result to make it much easier to read. Now let's add some uh, fields and columns into uh, your table. So you can uh, rearrange the table by clicking the left and right, or you can delete a column. Uh, this will make your result much, much easier to read. So right now you're looking at core mark. We have three core mark tests value, the metric, and so on. Right, only three test results. So now let's change the time filter from 15 minutes to one hour. So right now, we are seeing 12 results. So a uh, time filter, uh, in this case, uh, the time filter shows me uh, the test result within the past one hour. So after you are happy with your search, what you're going to do next is to save it. Right? So let's click on the save uh, search you know, so we can save the search. And then we'll type in some names, and then we'll save it. So uh, this would be uh, our first step of building a chart. You always start with a search. And then once you're happy with the search, 
You're going to save it. So the second step is visualize. Now we're going to click on the visualize tab. Under the visualize tab, you will see a list of charts you can build. So in this case, we're going to build a vertical bar chart from a search that we just saved earlier, which is the core mark score. So what you see right now is a bar chart that only has a single bucket. Now, this bucket contains all the 12 test results that was collected within last one hour. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to split the single bucket into smaller bucket by the VM flavors. So what I'm going to do is that I will click on the X exo, and then I will um, split the bucket, and then using the turn aggregation. Now the turn aggregation uh, will give you the unique turns inside a field. Right, so what field are we going to use? Are we going to use the uh, machine type, which uh, contains the VM flavor? So after uh, we do that, we can click on the play button. And the play button will apply the change. OK, so now what you're looking at is four buckets. Now each bucket uh, is a uh, flavor, uh, large, medium, small, and tiny. And they all have three test results in there. Um, but the, the test result count isn't what we, uh, in, uh, what we are interested. So uh, for the y axle, let's get the average of the uh, core mark score for each bucket. Now after you select that, you, play the, uh, you can apply change by clicking the play button. So what you are looking at right now is a large flavor will have a higher uh, average core mark score. Now the smaller flavor will have a lower uh, core mark score. Now if you want to change the y axle, uh, you can uh, do so in the custom label and uh, hit the play button again. Typo. OK, so uh, once you are happy with your charts, now again, you can also save it. And by clicking at the Save button, uh, type in a name to save it. Uh, I'm going to type Cormark Flavor Compare. So after you finish your visualization, the next step is to build your dashboard. So the dashboard is a place that you can put all of your charts, your searches together. Now let's click on the Add button here. So let's select um, the chart that we just built earlier. And then uh, we will also put uh, the search. Uh, you can resize it. And the next, we're going to also add the search that we created earlier. Now, this is the search result that's associated with the chart on the left. So I've also uh, built another uh, uh, line chart uh, of uh, iperf earlier. So I'm going to uh, put my line chart here, and also uh, as well as the search result next to it, side by side. So in my line chart, uh, I'm only, I only have two dots there, I mean two data points there. Um, so I'm going to uh, 
load more data. So I'm going to uh, resize um, the chart. And then I'm going to change the time filter again from one hour to 24 hours. So now you see more data displayed inside my iPerf chart. And also on the right hand side, you'll see the, the test result also updated itself. Now you can also apply the filter or change the filter by dragging on the charts. And the same on the right hand side, uh, the search result will also update itself. You can click on it to display more details. Now the dashboard, once you're happy with it, you can also click on the save button here and save it. Uh, so here will be uh, the end of my demo. Uh, with this, I will return to Catherine. Okay, so as you just see here, uh, the focus of today's talk is mostly on the tool. Notice that we haven't gone into any of the performance data itself, and that would be another talk. Um, but um, w the, the idea here is uh, how can you use a tool? How can you simplify your work by using existing tool in terms of test measurement, also saving data, and also visualizations? And uh, I, I truly believe that um, you, you would use different tools for different purpose. And um, Perkit is one of the tools that we introduced to you today. Um, if it fits your purpose, of course, the next step will be looking at the specific benchmarking for whatever problem, whatever performance analysis that you would like to do and drill into there. And that is where the expertise of performance engineering come in. With that, uh, I would like uh, to see whether we have any questions. No? Okay. Yes. Uh, the pool request, yes, but it has not. Well, you yeah. mean the pool request? No, PerfKit itself. Yeah, PerfKit itself okay. is. Yes, it's on GitHub, it's a... Can you show, oh, yeah. yeah. It is, uh, Perkit is in the GitHub. The electric search uh, publisher is submitted but has not merged. This should we are be working merged on soon, it. hopefully, so. Yeah. Yes. Any outstanding reviews that, uh, that need to be addressed for that merge to go through? Uh, no. Well, it, they left some the, comments. They were very receptive about it, so yeah. we addressed those comments and we're just waiting to hear it's, back from the Google. Yeah, know. it's like uh, uh, it's like open stack review. We go through a few cycles and then uh, generally very positive, uh, but uh, uh, the style and whatever have to match whatever perk it is. Yes, please. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So that is the the theme that we're trying to introduce today is use whatever tool that you think is um, you 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 probably most familiar with, and and you have the expertise in house in that 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 is the tool, but. But more important, you don't build some things. But you, you see how Kibana, you can use Kibana as an interface to looking at Elasticsearch engine or uh, even with uh, your log data, you can looking at it. That's the idea. The idea is open source and, uh, and, and the community to in, uh, contribute to that open source together. We can make our job much easier. That's the theme that we try to convey today. So uh, to answer your question, uh, one of your questions, uh, you said we should uh, use the log stash, right? So uh, by, by default, it does uh, output the result to a file, uh, to a specified location. So uh, if you configure your own log stash server to get the data from the file, 
Yeah. It's up to you if you want to yeah. do that too. Right. Right. Okay. Anything else? Yes, please. Are you guys using? Are you using this right now as far as like on any pause you're testing? We are exploring right now. We were able to test how many how many benchmarks so far. We tested about. Uh, we test all the standard set, so that's yes. about 19. One, one note, one note on here is, as any tool, if it is out of the box, is what get you into the door. That configuration, you choose any of the benchmarker here. The standard, the default configuration tool is for everyone to use. It might not suit your purpose. That is where the performance expertise coming in. You know what area one you want to look at, and that's where you tune your configuration file to whatever that purpose. And we hope with that kind of work, it will be a lot of white paper uh, coming out. But for a tool out of the box, the, the, the idea is get the user is a, a very short time to get into the door. That, that is the idea. Yes? And the benchmarks being configured for a particular workload or a specific kind of workload? Or the, you run your own kind of the, 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 the workload, as Paul showed here, is a, a standard workload. Let's say you build your own workload, then you have to uh, um, bring that workload into Perkit, then you have to go through the, the, the kind of like a plug in to bring your own workload inside. Yeah. Then you have to follow. The idea is if you use one of the 28, whatever, then, then you don't have to do anything more than your configuration. You still have to do configuration. Out of the box is not going to be suit your whatever your purpose. The idea here is without per kit, you will have to build a server, you have to install like the y, uh, YCSP, the Yahoo Cloud uh, Service Benchmarker, and then you configure it. But with per kit, it is installed for you and you just run with standard configuration. Okay, yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, I can't remember what the other one is, but, but so there are some sort of representations of right. typical work. Like yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's not so yeah. yeah. That, that is where the engineers, I, engineer come in and the performance engineers come in. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. It's just late and we all need to want to get out of here. Thank you. Thank you.